Hello, everybody. So today I want to cover five stocks that I find abnormally cheap on my spreadsheet. Uh, if you are not new to the channel, you're familiar with the way I value stocks. But if you're new to the channel, you know that my most important metric when I consider buying a stock is this one right here. Enterprise value over gross profit over revenue growth. It is a spin of the peg ratio uh, that have somehow applied to these stocks. But I, but I make it a little, little different. So I, I use enterprise value instead of market cap because enterprise value takes out debt and so uh, that gives a more accurate picture of uh, the cost of the firm, the price of the firm. I use gross profit because gross profit I think is one of the best indicators of um, the economic uh, profit of the firm, how much the firm can actually earn and so there's firms that are more profitable than others and I think it's best reflected in gross profit, that's why I use that. And then I use revenue growth and not earnings growth because revenue growth should closely track gross profit and earnings growth, uh, revenue growth, sorry, is is um, forecast by a lot of analysts out there. So that's enough for a metric. And what's important for me when I look at this metric is I want the, the number to be as low as possible, knowing that I usually consider something under a zero 0.5 to be very good in this metric. And that would make sense because the peg ratio, if you follow the peg ratio, we, you know, we, we usually consider a peg ratio under a one to uh, to be uh, valuable, to be to be interesting, uh, to be an interesting stock to buy. Well, given that I don't use earnings, but I use gross profit, right? A one would be too generous. A good deal to me is under a zero point five. And so, of course, when you look at these uh, these companies, you you have a hard time understanding the valuation because uh, they are all about. I mean, just about if you average it out, about fivefold cheaper than a 0.5 and some even more than that and so let me begin by the stock that i cover on the channel perhaps the most uh which is the most underrated stock I've ever since it's hims hims and hers elf uh hims is an app that's top 10 uh in, in both the app store and the play store for for healthcare it's a healthcare app what does hims do well hims is an e-doctor plus any pharmacy without insurance, and they provide a, a single price, easy to understand price, for seeing the doctor first time and then having follow up with a doctor if the doctor decides to prescribe a drug for you. And they also fulfill that drug, they send you that drug, and they focus mostly on health issues that are recurring, so it's a very sticky business. And in many ways, in my view, hymns should be valued much closer to a SaaS business. Now, if you know anything about SaaS business, you know they tend to be valued between 10 and 15 times sales. Here we have a stock that's trading at two times sales. And pay attention to all of your stocks that I have in the spreadsheet. That's about two times sales for gross margin that are in the 70, 80, 60%. So, so these stocks are dirt, dirt cheap, if you ask me. They're, they're, they're very inexpensive. Hims is an important position for me, right? If it went to zero, it would hurt for Hims. It's a big, it's a big position, right? It's not my biggest position. Positions. If you know the channel, you know my biggest position is Tesla, followed by Enphase. Uh, but it's a, it's a, it's a meaningful position for me, um, and I keep buying the stock at these prices. Uh, the stock is so cheap, even though it seemingly went up about two bucks compared to a few months back. I mean, it's almost irrelevant at this point that the, that, that the stock goes up by thirty percent when revenue growth is sixty percent. If you have a, a stock price that goes up thirty percent in one year, but revenue growth is sixty percent, you know, then then really Really, the stock is getting cheaper on a price to sales basis. And this is a stock, as long as it trades under 10 bucks, in my view, it remains a steal. And I'm very happy to be buying Hims. Let me talk about another company that I, that I cover a little less on the channel, um, mostly because it's... Um, it's a more straightforward business, if that makes any sense, and it's Stoneco, Stonier. Stonier is a very straightforward business. There's not not as much an ex explanation needed to explain a Stonier as there is to explain a Hims. What is Stonier? It's 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 a payment terminal for small businesses in Brazil. About about three million small businesses in Brazil use Stoneco and the Stonier payment terminal, um, and Stoneco focuses mostly on small businesses, uh, w which are businesses you know typically with just a few. Uh, 
employees, not not that big uh, type of businesses. They also have a very small uh, business in micro businesses. Micro businesses would be a business that we re we don't really find in the U.S., but that is very popular in Brazil. So they they focus on the the, the small business payment processing and the best analogy to Stoneco in the US would be Square and 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 by Square I mean Square of a payments app not Square of a company with cash app Square of the payment app and Square is called block nowadays anyway so it doesn't really matter but anyways this stock is so cheap and and it's it's very hard to understand uh, why it remains so cheap while it is in a sector that's fully understood by the market you know the payment sector is fully understood and all of the peers of Stoneco have much 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 higher uh, valuation even if you go to to brazil because the brazilian company you may say there's a brazilian discount even if you look at this brazilian discount i, I would argue it, it doesn't apply to most companies of brazil if you look at new bank if you look at mercado libre they don't have a discount but somehow stoneco has as the discount and that discount is due to a mistake that they made a few years back with another CEO where they lost money on collateral um, on, on collateral um, uh, on loans they, they had a they had a poor collateral registry they lost hundreds of millions of dollars but the market punished them stock dropped 90 percent and it's been trading 90 percent down from where it was ever since stock is owned stone cove stock is owned by warren buffett and Kathy wood and it's always worth mentioning i've said that multiple times on the channel before so so it's not new to you if you've been following this channel but let's talk about a stock that i've only briefly covered once and this stock is uh on on so it's on on um on is a maker of um shoes for runners but not just shoes they also make athletic wear for runners and you may say well why would this be very interesting uh, of a stock well first of all look at the valuation valuation is dirt cheap this is a company that's growing at 52 percent uh, next 12 months predicted to grow by analysts the gross margin is excellent at 59 percent um, but you may say uh, you know why would i invest in that stock they, they have such huge competitors there are so many huge competitors in this field of athletics and shoes you know you you have you have nike adidas etc well i would argue that is the, that is the very point uh, as to why a new company can disrupt that market because the preliminary analysis that i've done on on is that they have community driven sales and they have um, almost exclusively direct to consumer sales they, they 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 entirely control their sales process they don't have to share some of the cost of their sales with retailers and you understand how it could give you a tremendous tremendous edge when you don't have to share and and and, and i think i think this this uh, this uh, undercutting of distributors is is a pattern that i have seen in many direct to consumer brands and in many many new brands and new businesses try to entirely undercut the distributors um and and, and i think on is, is betting on this so i still need to do a full analysis of on on of on but when you look at these prices, I mean, I mean, this at a zero point one five, that's a very, very cheap stock out there. Let me tell you about a stock that I really wanted to cover, which is a fully, fully new stock here that I may cover in the future more on my channel, and it's Clear Secure Ticker Symbol U clear so what is clear well you may have seen this at airport but let me tell you what clear is clear is turning your your face it's turning your face into your government id so when you are registered with clear clear can scan your face and then you don't have to go in front of an official like a tsa official at the airport for example for them to look at you look at your id verify it's you and so um, this has a lot of advantages for for much more than just airports and the, the, the investment thesis even though uh, they have huge backing from airlines and this business could be tremendous if you just think about airports but the investment thesis of a company like you is moving beyond 
city-owned airports and moving into um, things like, you know, your office in the morning, instead of having a badge, you could just scan your face in front of clear and then you would just go through, but also hospitals, government offices, there's many, many settings where you need to show an ID before you either do a transaction or enter a secure physical space. And that's what you is trying to provide, this, this, this holistic way to enter a physical space without having to show your ID. Another example that comes to mind is, for, for example, rental cars. So, so it's, it's, it's really travel heavy, but not only. There are some specific industries where this could apply. The point is this company is dirt cheap at, at, at a 0 0.1. That, that's a very cheap company. It's growing very fast at 43%. Gross margin is 60, 63%, which is, which is excellent. And uh, enterprise value is actually fairly low in this company because if you look at this company, they are sitting on a pile of cash from their SPAC uh, like, like na namely more than 780 million of cash i believe that they're that they're sitting on um which which is which is just about tremendous and you know the little bit of debt for a company like like, like clear and like for many companies actually uh, that i follow on this channel like much of their debt actually comes from capital leases for, from leases and and you know i i, I could make a full video about why a, a lease is actually not really debt right i mean if you look at what if you look at the story Story of, of Elon Musk and, and Twitter and the Twitter headquarters and 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 how he was able to re renegotiate the lease. Ask yourself: Are leases really part of that? It's a tangent. Uh, let me get back on the topic. I know that was a tangent, but this is a stock that has a lot of cash. This is a stock that has a lot of cash. And I would be interested in doing a full coverage on uh, this company, Clear, just for me, just for me. So uh, that this is probably one coming. No need to tell me in the comment section. Clear is probably coming because I'm going to be analyzing it for myself. A final stock that I've put in there, and, and frankly, I've put it in there back because I looked at the price to sales of that company, and, and, and you know, I'm very compelled when I look at the, the price to sales of this company at a 2.4. Uh, company is trading at just under a billion dollars. Company has been a, a, a darling of retail investors for a long time. This company is, of course, Lemonade. Uh, and Lemonade, oh, that is a complicated company. In my, in my view, that's a complicated company, even though it, it seems straightforward, right? Because revenue growth is 59%. So they're growing, they're gaining new customers. Uh, then the gross margin is 31%. Um, and, and, and like I said, the cost is cheap. Uh, it's a first, it's a, you know, you know, it's a, it's the first quartile, lower lower end of a first quartile. So it's a cheap stock right there. Um, but to me, I see I see multiple multiple problems. And you know, this is this is funny as as, as I make this video uh, in Texas right now. I'm in Texas, and we have a winter freeze going on right now, and everything's shut down, and the roads are not working very well, and everything's shut down. Um, and if you remember this stock, uh, they were really hurt by another winter freeze that they had in Texas two years ago. And right there is, to me, not the problem of lemonade. To me, this is the problem of the insurance business. Is, is, is you, you never know what can happen. And, and, and if the insurance company doesn't have the, the, the legacy, quote-unquote, cash, um, from collecting premiums for decades, what do they do if they have an out of the ordinary event? Um, in any ways, th this is a stock uh, that I'm likely not going to buy because I'm not an expert in this industry. Um, and, and, and I find this industry, just like banking, I, I, I find it um, very subject to a black swan event or very subject to one-time shocks. If you have an exogenous shock in the marketplace, you know, you could have a company go bankrupt. And this is obviously what happened to Silicon Valley Bank and many other banks, uh, less than five actually, but about five, five other banks who, we, who we've who we all forgotten the name until the BTFP uh, program came through. Well, you know, something like this could happen uh, in the insurance world. You could, ha you could have a catastrophe and you would have a few insurance companies that would go bankrupt until the government intervenes and saves all of the other companies. But in the meantime, you know, if you're that one company that was that was impacted, well, you'd be in trouble. Anyways, I don't pretend this to be a field that I know very well, which is why I'm probably gonna gonna stay neutral on this one. But I'm putting it out there because it's very cheap. It's very cheap, and credit credit where credit is due as far as the valuation is very cheap. And 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 uh, I assume this has been a stock that has been painful to hold for a lot of the shareholders who bought it, bought it higher up. And this stock is cheap, and if I owned it, I definitely would not sell it. Anyways. 
all of these stocks are interesting. Like I said, I'm gonna cover clear, uh, secure a bit more in a future video. And of course, you know, my, my, my two, two favorites, they have a special place in my portfolio and I guess in my heart. It's, it's Hims and Stone Cove. These companies are dirt, 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 dirt cheap, very cheap. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. This was not investment advice, no financial advice. This is just entertainment. Please like, it really helps me reach more people. Please subscribe. Have a wonderful day.